Morning, everyone. I will uh, call this meeting to order. It's 9.30, and I would ask that we uh, stand for a moment of silent reflection. And in our thoughts, we keep the people of Quebec and those that live in fear around the, around the world, also the local that have lost uh, loved ones and, and uh, possessions in fires recently here in Lambton Shores. I would ask if uh, anyone has a disclosure of pecuniary interest to declare it uh, now or at the time. Seeing none, I would uh, ask if there's anything to rise and report from the uh, in-camera session. Nothing at this time. Thank you, Warden. Thank you. Uh, delegations. We have a number of delegations, and I would uh, call on a motion to uh, allow the delegations within the bar. Moved by Councillor McGugan, second by Councillor Deputy Warden McCharles. All in favor of that? Opposed? That is carried. Uh, our first delegation is Mr. George Millay, uh, Sarnia Lampton Economic Partnership. We have the uh, Presentation uh, in our agenda, but Mr. Malay is not able to attend this morning, uh, so we will uh, receive that uh, with the other delegations and move on to item B. I don't believe there's anyone else here from uh, SLEP to make the presentation. Uh, item B is uh, Joy Sim Robbins and Vicki Prell uh, regarding uh, uh, Tourism Charnia Lampton. And I would call them to uh, make their presentation. Welcome. Thank you, Warden Weber. We appreciate the opportunity to come and speak with you again about tourism, Sarnia Lambton. Uh, Vicki and I um, are part of the team, and I would like to uh, bring notice that our entire tourism team is here, your tourism team. Uh, Vicki and I, as well as Bev Hordowski, uh, Chris Bregman, um, Kyle Morrison, and Leona Allen. Uh, jointly, we have over 135 years of tourism experience. And I think that's well to be noted. Um, that, that being said, we are also very committed to our mission statement of bringing more tourists to the area, getting them to stay longer, getting them to spend more money, and to get them to return. Uh, TSL is Lambton County's destination marketing organization. We cover everyone. We're here uh, to represent all municipalities within Lambton County. We're also the accepted organization through provincial and national tourism organizations and international or, uh, tourism organizations. Uh, we also partner with regional uh, tr other tourism areas, being one, for example, is Chatham-Kent and Tourism Windsor-Essex Peely Island. And we are a fast and hard partner with Southwestern Ontario Tourism Corporation, SWATC, um, the regional tourism organization uh, one. There's a number of memberships we, we belong to, but I think the most important is to know that tourism in Lambton County is the third largest industry. Here are some of the recent stats, total visitor stats. 
uh, some of our marketing, our Navigate publication. We're happy to um, announce that we will be adding all the trails in Lambton County to our map for 2017. Uh, again, we're, we're very fast uh, partners with Swatsi. Uh, we're doing some digital and social media work, and we are really putting a lot of emphasis on this, knowing most people are using their phones like computers now, so we really need to be focused, uh, most of our marketing, to the digital and social media area. One of the other things that we've been doing is bringing in some travel media writers. And I think it's important to know that uh, when we facilitate a writer coming into the area, um, we usually set up the itinerary, we book all the appointments, and uh, we arrange their hotel. Um, and one, for example, that was in this year was uh, the freelance writer Jim Byers. And you may have heard of him in the media rate, uh, lately. He came in in June, and we facilitated his visit. He came in, and he spent a day and a half in uh, Sarnia, and then went up to Grand Bend. And through that, uh, you will probably have heard in the media, um, all the communities that he visited last year, he picked six communities that he thought should be must-sees for the 150th birthday of Canada. And uh, as you may have heard in the media yesterday, Sarnia uh, was one of those six, uh, one of the only communities in all of Ontario that got picked. So that's a real win. Uh, sports tourism. I'm going to let Vicki talk a little bit about some of the sports tourism things. Okay. Thank you, Joy. So uh, last year we hosted the um, Blue Water International Grand Fondo. It was a brand new event. It was sold out with over 500 cyclists uh, from across North America. Uh, this year we will be hosting the event again, and uh, our target is uh, 750 cyclists. Um, the tour uh, has a 50K, uh, 100K, and 150K uh, course, and it goes throughout Lambton County. We also last year hosted the Great Waterfront Trail Adventure with over 150 cyclists. And we were the uh, only site in Canada to host the um, December series, which was uh, the Canadian women's hockey team versus the U.S. national hockey team. It was a sold-out event at the Progressive Auto Sale Arena. And um, we obviously there was a lot of coverage from that. Uh, we also hosted some additional um, new sporting events, the Bauer International Invitation Hockey Tournament with over 74 teams. Uh, again, that is coming back next year, and the Nations Cup Hockey Tournament, uh, as well as other um, existing annual tournaments that we uh, facilitate every year. Thanks, Vicki. We'll move on to arts and culture. Uh, what's in your presentation is just a very small uh, sample of what, uh, what events and programs that we've been involved in. One uh, that comes to mind is the Victoria uh, Playhouse in Petrolia, how we did a joint marketing piece and marketed to the U.S., and they had a very successful year last year. Group tours. Uh, we're still going after the group tour market. It's an important market. For us, um, we have a lot of product that is, is really group friendly. Um, and our location being in Point Edward and where we are right under the bridge in the visitor center uh, affords us the ability to uh, be a stop for buses. They come in to use our washroom. We provide a uh, refreshment to them. And we're able to do a sales call on group, group um, buses that we usually don't see uh, at any other time during our, our marketing Meetings and conferences, there's a number that are happening this year. Uh, visitor services, again, our location um, is, is very key. Um, I think it's interesting to know that um, since we've moved into that area, the flood of people that come into that building far surpass anything we've seen in any other location we've been in. Part of it is the draw and, our lo and the location of being right under the bridge. Uh, again, with the American dollar being what it is, we're seeing a lot more visitors from the U.S. And I think it's, it's a, a number to really understand that last year in 2016, there was over 82,000 people that came through the doors of that center. 
One of the other things we're doing in visitor services is now we have a retail area. We are working with SLEP on a business plan, on a retail business plan that will help us um, and will look at best practices to revenue generate for not only the retail center, but also for the boardroom that we rent out. Oops. Uh, here's a number of uh, consumer shows. Uh, the Outdoor Adventure Show is one of them. We did the two motorcycle shows in Cleveland. Uh, we did a bike show. Uh, we've done some food and wine shows, beverage shows in Toronto. And onward to 2017. 2017 is a very exciting year for tourism. Not only is it Canada's 150, but there's a number of really interesting things happening in our area. Um, I don't know... Um, whether you have had the time to look at the next stop uh, video that was done from Alveston to Thorndale, um, but we, I would urge you to do that. We partnered with Swatsi on that, and to date, as of yesterday, uh, we got the latest stats. Our video, the video series, there's four in the series, was seen more than 1.4 million times. So obviously we're doing a second video. Uh, one of the other things we think is ex uh, very exciting for our area is the UNESCO designation. That's uh, the application that's gone in, as well as the further development of the Lambton uh, Shores trails. Um, and I think the one last thing I want to say that I think is very exciting for the whole county of Lambton is our product development program. We're working on a program right now. We started in Lambton Shores. We had a meeting earlier this month with over 12 stakeholders, and we will be holding our first workshop sometime later this month to start developing a program that we will um, create and we will expand throughout the county. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation. Uh, very informative. Any uh, questions from Council? Councillor Brukowitz. Thank you, Warden Weaver. Uh, Joy, you mentioned a little bit about facilitating the visitors here. And uh, there's one particular group that always gets attention every year. Uh, we have all the transit boaters. They come in, and there's a tremendous amount of wealth stuck on those boats. And I've been at some, a lot of them are foreigners, you know from the United States and so on. And uh, some of them invite me, and they, they don't seem to really connect with the attractions within the Lambton County. You know, sometimes, you know, I mention them, galleries, some of them may, may not. But do you have some, some sort of targeted uh, approach towards this, this wealth that is trapped on those boats without anywhere, you know, without any, any directions to where, where to spend the money? The travel guide or our experience guide that we provide has all the attractions and things to do in our area. Uh, all the marinas uh, in Lambton County have copies of uh, our experience guide. So, for example, if you go to the Sarnia Bay Marina, they have um, um, a rack there with our travel guides. Um, we also work closely with the, the different uh, marinas. We've gone to different boat shows with them to not only promote the marinas, but also to promote the things to see and do while they're here. Um, again, a lot of it is just continuing to, um, you know, explain what we have and, and obviously to uh, continue to obviously... Um, recommend different things to see and do. A lot of the marinas also do have shuttle services where they take the boaters downtown, for example, in Sarnia, or they'll take them to a restaurant. So again, we're encouraging that, and we're encouraging uh, going to different boat shows and obviously getting the, uh, the word out of all, all the things to see and do in our area. Uh, thank you. I, I know all about the racks. I know about the shuttles and so on. Do you do some marketing efforts like it's, it's so easy, so inexpensive, like a personal email blast to, to the people who are there. It probably, the marina probably has some database of, of those personal contacts, whether it's email, Facebook, whatever. Is, uh, have you tried anything of that? 
We have an email blast that we use for consumers. So we do send out information about uh, things to see and do in our area to uh, people who sign up for our newsletter. Uh, but it's certainly a, a great uh, idea to try and tap into maybe other um, email databases that, that the marinas might have. Uh, again, it might not be able to come directly from us because obviously there's some um, legal... Uh, Thing that you can't share your database with other organizations. If they sign up for the marina newsletter, obviously they have to um, be sent information strictly from the marina, but we could probably get around that and, and look at other avenues to target that market better. Tell me one more little... One more. That's it. That's it. Uh, have you looked at the experience of Port Colborne, how they're able to actually get the, you know, they have the marina there too, and they seem to be extremely successful in getting those people, you know, to spend their money. Uh, we do work with is part of our RTO1, so we have worked with them uh, in the past. Uh, but again, you know, there's always uh, room for improvement in that area for sure. Thank you. Anyone else have uh, any questions? Seeing none, thank you very much for your presentation. I look forward to... Uh, Another great season. Item C, we have uh, Mr. Ralph Ganter and Ms. Paula Reum Zimmer uh, updating a status on the withdrawal management detox facility. So I'd call them to the front. To begin and then I'll hand it over to Ralph. Um, so thank you for the invitation for sharing any updates and the news of um, the work that we have been doing. Um, my, although I've been new to Blue Water Health over this past year, um, it's certainly become very quickly apparent that we share the priority, Blue Water Health and Erie St. Clair and the, um, the county council on this item of withdrawal management services. And although I am new um, to Sarnia for a year, I have been part of the conversation of withdrawal management services as a leader in mental health and addictions for the past 14 years. So to begin with, um, we did start a community profile. So in 2013 is actually when Air St. Clair Lynn approached Blue Water Health and asked them to engage in this, in this venture. Um, it wasn't a Blue Water Health initiative initially. Um, but was asked to become involved. And at that time in 2014, uh, Blue Water Health did engage in one of actually Canada's leading authority on the issue, Dr. Brian Wright, Rush. And Dr. Rush is one of the, um, is very well authored in the area of withdrawal management services um, from the Centre of Addictions and Mental Health in Toronto. And at that time, um, they did a community inventory of needs and um, shared and hosted several um, venues with stakeholders in the community and created a a report identifying the needs and recommendations for services. So uh, the community profile is, it's not news to the individuals on the council that these are the items that were um, highlighted in the report that Dr. Brian Rush and at the time um, Debbie Hook, who was the project manager of withdrawal management services, had identified. So from that, uh, they did proceed then to uh, create a, um, so from, from that we have moved into a capital planning project and um, the capital planning project um, initially uh, was submitted actually in 2015 and early in 2015 had been approved by Erie St. Clair Lynn um, Board. Um, and then subsequently the capital planning process has been changed and it had been altered so that capital planning projects um, under the amount of $10 million would actually then follow a different stream, a stream that we've been um, advised is a more um, streamlined process for a lower request of less than $10 million. And uh, this project specifically was in estimation of around $8.8 .8 million. So um, we uh, qualified to um, switch streams and go to the 
um, capital project that the Ministry of Health under, identified for under $10 million. So from that, um, we did switch gears and we did uh, submit the proposal to the Erie St. Clair Lynn and in the October board meeting, the Erie St. Clair Lynn had approved our pre-capital planning um, submission and from that had gone on to the Ministry of Health. Um, there was only a res short brief response from the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Health um, with just a few questions and within um, less than a week turnaround time they had all of their replies and indicated they had the information um, that they required from Blue Water Health. So, um, so we are um, we are in the process right now of um, the Blue Water Health submission has been in the Ministry of Health's hands uh, since it was um, endorsed by the Erie St. Clair Lynn um, Board in October. So just a quick recap, uh, the, the process for withdrawal management services was always meant to be a phased in process. And, um, and it's very critical to understand this because um, even similar to right now, when we see our emergency departments overflowing, we're starting to say, oh, geez, maybe we missed the, um, the ball on actually creating a more robust primary health care system sooner. Um, and it may avoid emergency department visits. So very much like withdrawal management service, the important piece for us was start with phase one. And that was creating the community withdrawal management services. And that's where we have a team um, who go out into the community, individuals' homes, or the individuals come to our office. And there is a larger number of the community that successfully withdraw from substances in that venue. And in fact, it's more appealing. They're, they don't have to leave their homes. They have their family support, their friends, and can get the professional services. So we started with the phased approach and... Um, De very deliberately because that was the one that was going to reach more individuals in our community. Knowing that the bedded approach was phase two and absolutely a critical piece, just like an eMERGE department is, but, um, but we wanted to get the phase one right and um, become that resource to the community as soon as we could. So since then, October 2014th, um, we have served over 800 individuals in, in Sarnia Lambton. Um, these are individuals with a variety of um, addictions needs, and they have been served in the, um, in the framework of staying closer to home and providing the service where some individuals may be able to maintain employment, um, are able to maintain their child care, and reside in their home with the proper services coming to them. Um, and then over 4,500 4, visits um, in that process. So we are at phase two, and phase two is the bedded service. Um, it is a bedded service of a total of 24 beds with an, um, three, comp three different compositions of the beds. And um, this is the process that we are now underway and have done a lot of work um, preparing for. Sorry. So in this process, we work very closely with um, many of our provincial provincial peers in this area. In fact, I'm on the board of the Addictions and Mental Health Ontario and have many um, co communications and contacts with folks who are running withdrawal management services. Um, we work closely with Hotel Du Grace, who run a, a withdrawal management service very similar to the size that we are looking at. We understand what the footprint is. We know what their budget is. We know the FTEs, how much it costs to operate from um, food services to their client travel. So we are ready and prepared with all of that detail. Um, however, the, the challenge certainly is um, right now Blue Water Health, our, our CEO, Mike LePayne, had um, communicated clearly to our, our staff this year that Blue Water Health has committed to no layoffs and for um, budgetary purposes. And with that, we um, are very um, diligent in any investments um, that we are making and cannot take the liberty of um, proceeding without this, uh, the approval of our pre-capital plan. Um, so we are extremely looking, we are looking forward to that. We've had um, ongoing conversations with Ralph and the team at Erie St. Clair Lynn. Everyone understands the urgency. Certainly the hospital on a daily basis, we, we hear the communication in the community. Um, we have family members. We have um, Ms. Lori Hicks in the audience with us, who's on our steering committee, who unfortunately tells the tragic story of losing her son 
to fentanyl overdoses, we are reminded on a daily basis the urgency and don't take that need lightly and um, are very committed to hit the ground running when we do receive response from the Ministry of Health. And I'll hand it over to very good. Thanks very much, and thanks for having me here today as well. Just a couple of comments, um, fairly similar to what Paula had mentioned. <clears throat> I believe when I was here last time, we had talked about the fact that there was a, a new way of doing community capital, and um, I think when I was here, that policy hadn't yet been released, and of course it was released last summer. So it really is an expedited process in terms of you know less steps uh, for approving and getting a capital project underway. So, um, as Paul had mentioned, um, our recommendation was that the Blue Water Health submit this under this community capital, which they did. And as Paul had mentioned, <coughs> we had uh, our board meeting here in Lampton County <coughs> on the 24th uh, of uh, October. Uh, Lynn Board approved it. Uh, we uh, got our briefing documents up to the ministry right away on the 29th. So we expedited it with all of our due diligence and preparation for that. As Paul has said, ministry questions have really been very, very um, uh, modest. Um, usually with a project such as this, we get lots of pushback in terms of size, the amount of beds, um, the functions. Um, based on the work to date, based on the work that Paula has done, no questions around that. So that's usually one of those hurdles that is a signal for us. Um, as you can imagine, um, knowing that I was coming here today, I was asking the ministry on Monday, you know, it would be nice if I had something in hand. Uh, because um, obviously um, you want to know what the next steps are. I don't have that yet because they're just finalizing their review. But the comments certainly are is the project is well aligned with our own LIN plans. Definitely the project is aligned with the provincial opioid strategy that was announced this year. Obviously very well aligned with local local needs. Um, so we're just waiting. It's It's imminent. That's the best word I can say. What I'm not in control of is capital funding. I'm in control of the operating funding, so we have already, as you know from our past motions, put the dollars aside in terms of operations or we'll carve it out. Next phase for us, sorry, I should have a glass of water here. Next phase for us is when the approval comes to go into the planning phase, then the engagement really starts to take place, design and so forth. So, yeah, I should use this. Yeah. Okay. Small. Small. Yeah. Do the quick uh, yep. gulp, but yep, we're yep. good. <clears throat> Thank you. Questions? We're, we're sure. Yeah. <laughs> Councilor Bushy? Mr. Warden, to, to the speakers, you know what? I try to contain myself for what I hear your speeches, good, eloquent speeches, and I. I can't help, but I think there's something wrong. Since 2011, we have been dealing with this issue. Now, if, it, if I was trying to dry, I, and I don't drink myself, but if I was drinking and trying to dry up, 2011, I'll be underground before, I, before that building is finished. It's, somehow there's something wrong somewhere. I mean, you could talk to me for one hour. I'm not happy with it. Thank you. Uh, any response? Anyone else have any questions? Councillor Bradley. <coughs> Excuse me. Thanks for the presentation. <coughs> uh, the um, definition of expedited, um, and I appreciate that, uh, and I don't doubt the sincerity of everyone at Blue Water Health and the Lynn's trying to move this forward. But the, um, the the frustration at this, I guess, and you just heard it from someone here beside me, is that um, this county council has offered repeatedly. Um, to take whatever actions are necessary, and this county council committed what 250,000 five years ago, and another individual in the community committed a million dollars for this project. And the frustration is when we hear about the it's gone to the ministry or the Kremlin or whatever you want to call it. There seems to be nothing the community can do when we're, we ask, "What can we do to support this?" You know, and, and the warden, we've discussed this here about a delegation to the minister. Uh, there are opportunities there. Um, we want to help, I guess. We want to help you. But we always get the sense that you don't dare try to interfere politically with the ministry. And, and all we want to do is help. That's what it is, a very simple message. And, you know, I'm concerned on location, that uh, 
the location, wherever that may be, um, may end up costing us another year or two if the zoning, and we've had some conversation on this, the zoning isn't appropriate wherever it is, um, then we're going to be delayed further. So I guess the, the question is this, is what can this county council do to help both organizations expedite in the fullest meaning of that word, this project? Best recommendations is, uh, you know, the the commentary you're making <laughs> obviously is one that's that's listened to. Um, you know, any type of letter writing or you know, support that you want to do, that's formal. Um, I think, you know, the message is everything is done. We're just waiting for the final review. And then we can move on with stage two, which is actually that uh, development of, um, you know, the implementation plans. Follow up, Councillor Bradley. And then is when will the community, communities, because we don't know where the location is, when will that become public knowledge? Because as you know from any of these type of projects, whether it be a woman's shelter, a group home, um, there are often issues that come up that uh, can have great impact on the approval of those particular projects. So again, you know, the message is really simple, is that we want to help, we want to know how to do that. You know, is, is this county council going off to see the Minister of Health? Is that, a, is that going to help or is it going to hurt? And, 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 and be honest with us, if, it's, if, if you think that it would negatively impact on the project, then tell us that. But we just want to move this forward for the, the sake of the people and the woman in this room who we, we both know who lost her son two years ago this March. That's all we want to do. The time you get to that point, we'll already be at that point where we'll have some feedback as to where this is going. Councillor Gillis. Uh, thank you, Warden Weber and members of County Council, and thank you, Mr. Gantry and Ms. Arum Zima for uh, the presentation. I thought it was excellent. With regard to um, the, initial, the initial proposal that we put forward, and you mentioned that there was a switching of gears, and it was mentioned at Committee AM as well. What guarantee do we have that what we bring forward now isn't going to suffer the same fate? and that the ministry says, well, you know, you have to switch gears. That's my first question. My second question is, given the fact that there's, um, this particular government now is on a, a very tight timeline, uh, if they sign all the documents, then is it cast in stone and cannot be reversed by another government coming in? is we even have letters from past ministers of health, even as far back as 2001, that are still honored. So that's the case. Yeah. Did you want to talk a little bit about the process that you want to go through in terms of um, engagement? Um, into the next, Because I think that answers the question we had over here. So um, the actual, the next process, uh, the step two of the capital process that was up on, oh, it's not on. Um, that was up on the slides is the area is the piece that we identify site selection so we are very interested in obtaining some resources for uh, community um, commercial or real estate um, within the Sarnia proper to create the inventory of opportunities um, where we may select a site and then have the community engagement on um, the response to that. I know that we've done, um, actually we've been fortunate that um, Lori Hicks, she has in fact done a diligent review of contacting uh, more than 75% of the 28 sites in Ontario that are operating. And Lori has had terrific responses on getting feedback on the um, lessons learned from the sites, some of them who have just um, become operational, who have had some fresh um, good points about the importance of proximity and the community engagement. And so we have um, even done some of that surveying more recently to make sure that people are aware of um, the conversations that they've had in other developments and what we'll be looking for when we do obtain the um, the resource of a, um, of a community broker. But again, that's um, where we are kind of stalled, where we can't continue to invest anymore until the capital for the um, pre-capital planning allows us to um, provide some resources to do that. Is 
Deswegen. So is, uh, for us, um, I know the hospital and ourselves, you know, say for a moment that we don't get the ministry approval, but I'll just say that, you know, the signals we have are, are pretty good. We still want to put together contingencies just in case. So that usually is that leasehold side, rental leasehold improvements. Um, the, pr the preference for us, preference for myself is, I don't want to put operating dollars into something like that. I'd rather have it go into frontline workers, whether it be nurses or counselors and so forth. So for us, um, using the capital from, or using the capital expertise from the ministry helps us in so many different ways. Helps us with the risk, I guess is one way of saying it. But also in terms of the expertise as to what does a withdrawal management look like based on best practices? What do you have to watch out for in terms of infection control and all the elements that go with it? What's best in terms of flow, especially when you're you know, having people come in and get discharged? So for us, because there are other withdrawal managements, and as Paula had said, one of the models that's being looked at is the one in Windsor, but there's models across the province and internationally. So using the ministry capital process, you know, we get access to some of those best practices. So there's a, there's a clear advantage and a benefit to do that. And uh, that's why, you know, there's, there's impatience, but at the same time, there's so much value for us to go that route. But the big one is, you know, if our contingency had to be to carve out operating dollars for capital, I'd rather have it go into frontline service, and I think you know everybody would, everybody agrees with that. Councillor Arnold, thank you, Warden Weber. I just uh, I appreciated Mr. Gander's comment about 2001, because I think that was the uh, second last time that we started this process and uh, trying to move forward with this type of a facility, and the last time was in 2011, as uh, what uh, my colleague Mr. Bushi had just uh, mentioned, and. We looked at a number of different uh, sites at that time. Uh, it's a very difficult siting piece. And I think uh, uh, Mr. Bradley had spoken about uh, finding out locations and that sort of things and, and working with our staff. That I wonder if we aren't at the spot that, uh, depending on what happens here, or I shouldn't say it doesn't depend on what actually happens with the allocation of capital, but I think that piece could be being worked at with our own staff folks. And as uh, Mike had said about uh, the county itself had put money aside to try and kickstart this whole project. And there is other folks in the community that are very generous to this type of thing because they have such a soft heart for the people in this community. And I'm won wondering what the status of that site selection or a suite of sites, because it could be 18 months to 24 months and beyond. By the time, if you have to start looking at rezonings, that's not an easy process because this is not an easy facility. So I'm just wondering if we could have a, maybe an update of where we are in that part of the process. And if nothing else, maybe we could start that process moving it forward quicker and uh, work with our staff here at the county to see what we can do to help facilitate that. And the good folks, if it's the preferred area is going to be in the city, have them on board as well and, and that uh, triangle thing working together to make it happen. And our meeting with the minister, if we're fortunate enough to do it, is going to be the end of uh, February. It's not that far away when I look back at the last six years of trying to make this project work. And Mr. Cantor, if, if we have some indication before then, that would be just, you know, wonderful. It would put us over the moon. But the track record hasn't been very uh, forthcoming to meet that objective. It actually, um, our steering committee just this past week had um, discussed the next step of creating the, um, of engaging with a community um, broker for at least a site inventory so that we can refresh what understanding what exists and um, what exists within the um, variables that we're looking for for the proper site. So we would welcome actually working with um, the individuals with your team to again do some of the whatever work groundwork we can do in advance of um, while we wait or in advance of um, the final um, response from the ministry. We'd be happy to do that. And in fact, is on our was just a recent conversation just last week at the steering committee that we're ready also to do um, to keep taking next steps versus just kind of being in a holding pattern. And if I can, if I can just add to that is the, the critical step is size and scope, which gets sorted out right now, right? That helps with that next step. Councillor McDougall, and then Councillor Berkowitz. Thank you, Warden Weber, members of County Council, and to our guests here today. Um, I think around 
this uh, council chamber, there's probably not one of us that uh, is without some personal experience with friends or um, local residents who are struggling with mental health and addictions. So um, what I would like to say is that as somebody who lives in Sarnia, who works in Sarnia, um, and uh, sees on the ground the devastating effect of addiction on families, on community, that I have appreciated the time that was taken to bring this project along because the detox facility, the, the uh, acute stage of withdrawing, is the first step along a long lifetime journey of uh, withdrawing and managing um, dependency at whatever level that is with drugs or alcohol. And for me, it has always been that I'm on the side of withdrawal management services because at the end of the day, we also all know that people um, often have one or two takes through a detox process before things start to kick in. And in having had the chance to see the Hotel Dew facility um, and to see the withdrawal management um, program after that and to live in the heart of Sarnia, I think that community confidence in a facility that's going to be developed and properly resourced is something I've heard over and over and over again and have taken the opportunity to meet with Blue Water Health and Paula, to your, um, uh, to your team of managers at Blue Water Health, for those of us who have gone and had those one-on-one -on -one conversations, that has been very helpful to build confidence. Um, so that uh, what, you know, I can appreciate that once we hear, and hopefully that will be soon, uh, it's around whatever the ministry approves that we can continue that confidence building and go out to the community um, uh, John McCharles was uh, at the meeting um, that we were brought up to date um, last week with Blue Water Health, and again, I have appreciated that, that uh, the community engagement piece, I think, is, is uh, percolating along, and community engagement is what's going to bring this to the next level of a successful um, facility. But all along, I have wanted something that was properly resourced to build, and I'm hearing this morning that we're almost there with that and adequately resourced to properly manage because uh, I know far too many people who are struggling in our community. I know far too many people who've lost, um, not just um, the family that is in the gallery today, but people who have lost family members to um, addiction. Uh, I know it's been long, but uh, we're almost there, and I think we need to have confidence that we'll, and you've heard from all of us this morning, that we're willing to help politically in whatever way we can to move this along. So uh, thank you for the update, and uh, um, thank you for the steps towards confidence building, because that is the most, that's the most critical thing now moving forward. <coughs> So add, and, and I absolutely agree, and I would say our withdrawal management folks, especially who are attending homes and seeing individuals in the eMERGE, um, are just as passionate to make sure this happens as soon as possible. We know when an individual comes to our emergency department and we don't have the residential program, it's a missed opportunity to engage that individual, and we need that additional tool in the entire model that we, we're delivering right now to successfully um, reach and make the impact that we want to. So thank you. Councillor Bruzewitz. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Warden Weber. Paula, you mentioned Samuel and doing the inventor of potential sites, uh, right? Yeah. Well, that's not any good if you do not secure those, you know, the, the time between the actual rezoning and so on. So do you have any specific money set aside to option and secure this property for a viability if, if, if they're chosen? Well, that's actually, um, Ralph, I don't know if you're ready to if you were saying something, but um, that's actually what the stage two specifically targets. Stage two is the um, funding that they provide to do all of the planning. So bringing in the consultants, we've been working with the consultants for um, the past two years. They've been involved in 
Um, in understanding what the scope is, we know what the footprint is. Again, you know, we have square footage. We know what our needs are. So, um, but the next step is, you know, resourcing the additional planning that's required and completing a survey and, and someone doing the legwork. But, um, but I do, you know, there is opportunity to do some of that um, collegially with the individuals who have identified that just today. Um, and, and we're open to proceed with that phase. But for the full robust um, plan of um, inventory and needs and, and um, creating the functional plan and, and the site plan, then we do need to um, bring along consulting services. Um, and that's where we require the pre-capital approval that gives us that, uh, that funding to do that. Up question, uh, would uh, Weber like th there is going to be lag time between and and how much money do you actually have in this options uh, funding to secure the property for whatever it takes six to eighteen months? Because without that, you know, you you can go through this step, and if none of these properties actually is secured, it's just uh, spinning the wheels without moving forward. Actually, that's exactly what we are saying. We're, we're actually in a, in a pattern of waiting to see um, the approval so that we can have the revenue and the resources to take this next. Because it is an investment. And, um, and not knowing, certainly Ralph shares the optimism of the response, but not knowing that guaranteed, um, it, it still is a risk of an investment if we don't know definitely where the Ministry of Health is going to, what direction they're going to point us in. I should, just, I should add just as well, as part of this um, second phase, um, the, the work is actually looking at what are the different ways to, you know, put into place. One could be, you know, a, a build all by itself. A second one is a partnership with other health service providers with, within our funding envelopes or perhaps anybody else. And then as, as we said, the third one is, you know, perhaps it is just a simple, you know, rental leasehold improvement. So that's what, what is, is decided on in the second phase. And part of what comes behind that is, um, is uh, um, you know, for their standards in terms of size of rooms and so forth. So now that we've got the scope and the volumes in a sense set out, you know, the, the, the space tables are in a sense put together and that helps you with, you know, that next step. One other thing, well, I was just going to mention, the other thing that, um, you know, we're kind of thinking as well is, is that um, although we're looking at this being in some kind, of a, some kind of a site, is there any kind of interim step we can do as we're waiting, right? And uh, uh, if you look at this, it's residential withdrawal management, so it tends to be, it is a community type of program. So one of the, uh, the key thoughts that I have as well is, uh, is there an interim step that we can do is, you know, while this is happening, can it be located in any kind of space, even within Blue Water Health? So something we want to entertain is, is there anything like that that we can do? So we want to try to look at all the different options here as well. Thank you, Councillor McGugan. Thank you, Warden Weaver, members of County Council. We've had a great discussion. I do say thanks for the information. Maybe I've missed something through the past years. Uh, should it not be, or why can it not be just attached to what you got there now at Blue Water Health? And you should be able to find some room there without going the whole, a lot of a zoning and uh, OMB hearings and all the rest, because we're three to five years away as we uh, stand here today. I just say thanks for the information. Perhaps the only response I can give is that um, the way withdrawal management is... Um, defined is it is meant to be outside of a hospital um, could could be on a campus if you look at if you look at the Windsor example the withdrawal management is in the larger campus of uh, the Windsor hospitals but it tends to be something that's different because you want it in a different environment than a hospital and you don't want an institutional right all those all those factors okay uh, thank you for your presentation uh, I think we can uh, Acknowledge the, the frustration and the willingness of this council to move forward with uh, something and if there's anything we can do uh, Please ask and we will do what we can In the background and and with the ministry. So thank you
Our next uh, presentation is Mr. Santo Gorno, uh, and he has concerns to, uh, regarding the Suncor and the Creative County Fund. I would ask him to come forward and address council. Thank you, Warden Weber and the counselors for allowing me to speak today. Um, I know this has become a contentious issue, and uh, before I start, I want to emphasize that uh, any comments and criticisms should not be viewed as a direct commentary on the character or integrity of any members of council or staff. I think they've done an outstanding job. Uh, it should not be viewed as a criticism of the Creative County Committee. Uh, I fully support what they do, and again, uh, they've done an outstanding job. I believe everyone involved uh, has the best interests of the county at heart, and I just wanted to make that uh, clear. Um, I also wanted to speak, and I, and I think you've all seen the, uh, the, the correspondence I uh, presented. I did want to comment on the activities of this council over the past uh, several years. Uh, you've been extremely supportive of the community and uh, their concerns for uh, uh, the use of turbines uh, in the community. Uh, and I, I, I listed a number of them, uh, the uh, council unanimous support for a motion from uh, Wayne Fleet to uh, ask for a moratorium on turbines until more uh, information could be obtained. Um, you've declared uh, the county an unwilling host, uh, participated in a divisional uh, hearing in support of a family in Huron County and by the way, I received a number of calls from around the province after that uh, expressing admiration for the kind of support that we're lucky enough to have in uh, Lambton County. And uh, the county also participated in two environmental review tribunals, uh, one for the Cedar Point project and one for Jericho. And um, the main uh, concern for the, the county was the uh, uh, traffic safety of the uh, pylons uh, placed in close proximity to the uh, roadways. Um, they weren't successful in convincing the tribunal, but uh, their concerns were fully justified. When, as I pointed out, we've ha we have had a traffic fatality in the neighboring county uh, when a vehicle left the road and, and hit one of the transmission line pylons. So when I was writing all this down, I, I was feeling a bit remiss because I don't believe that we've really done an adequate job of uh, conveying our gratitude uh, to this council and, and also to the staff who have, who have, who have helped us. Um, we truly are appreciative, and uh, I didn't want to give the impression that we're, we're uh, being a little bit uh, uh, backbiting or, or, or untoward towards this council. Um, I did want to go over some of the uh, details. I'm not going to read the, uh, the, uh, the correspondence in verbatim. I, I would want to point out uh, some of the things that came out uh, uh, fr from the uh, records, and, and one is on the timelines. And, and the original uh, uh, it was Suncor that initiated the uh, the original contact with the county regarding the uh, the donation, and they also insisted on having the donation uh, credited to the Cedar Point project. Uh, not to Suncor and Xterra. And they're also insistent on the timing of the uh, announcement uh, for early December. I didn't really uh, get the significance of that until the announcement last week that they had sold their, their share of the Cedar Point project to uh, a firm in uh, Toronto, uh, Fiera. And uh, so it all, it all fit in. This was, this was a publicity uh, play. Uh, they wanted to dress up the project uh, and make it more presentable for a sale. There's nothing wrong with that, but I, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit irritated that, uh, that they used the, the county and, and the county committee as, as part of their plan to uh, improve the image of, of the project. Uh, it's not illegal, uh, but I think it was probably inappropriate for them to, to do that. Uh, I did mention a couple of things about whether it was uh, 
appropriate to have uh, discussions with Suncor without involving the entire council. I do know that the committee is, uh, the, the Creative County Committee is an, ar an arm's length uh, committee, uh, which uh, is to uh, operate independently of council. But there are four council members on it, and I think that it would not be inappropriate to receive advice and, and uh, direction from the council, if, especially if there's a contentious issue that we know uh, uh, will result in, in, in some comment from the uh, community. Um, you know, whether or not we can, we can uh, resolve it uh, today or not is, is another matter. Uh, I think there were a couple of opportunities to uh, bring this forward to council. There were some milestones in October and November, and uh, we had a council meeting on November the 2nd and another one on November the 30th where it could have been brought forward. Um, and again, I'm not uh, disputing the, uh, the intention or, or the character, but um, I, think, I think it was a missed opportunity to, to get some creative wisdom from uh, the entire council. And going forward, I think we need to look at how we, how we deal with these issues in the future. And, and I know that there's been some people that expressed that we should be more pragmatic. Um, the turbines are here. I mean, they're, they're operating. Uh, they're not going to go away. But, uh, you know, we have a number of, of extre extreme options. You know, we can treat them as pariahs or we can treat them as upstanding pillars of the community. And, and I think uh, the best answer is somewhere in between. I think we need to have that discussion because right now we don't really seem to know how we should be dealing with uh, these corporations. And uh, that was really all I had to say. Okay, thank you for your comments. Any uh, questions or comments from council members? Councillor Gilliland. <clears throat> thank you for your report. Uh, I happen to be one of the uh, councillors that's on that committee. And I congratulate you for bringing this out because a lot of this information was not available to the council or the committee. It, 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 you... Uh, through the Freedom of Information Act, you have brought some information to me. I didn't agree with this donation. I thought we should have had taken it to the County Council. As a matter of fact, a later motion in our meeting was that we didn't need to talk to County Council about donations. I voted against that because I think that's wrong. So I'm going to congratulate you for bringing this information forward. There <clears throat> seems to me a lot of things are done without our information, and it seems like it does work around county council meeting. So thank you for that. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilor, the Deputy Warden McCharles. Thank you, Mr. Warden, members of county council. Um, I think it's a little bit too late to do anything about what's happened, but uh, I would like to propose a motion if that's possible. And uh, I'll read you what I've... Uh, scribble down here so it might need some wordsmithing but uh, that in the future all financial implications involving the county of Lambton and wind farms operations come before county council for direction prior to any approvals and I move thank that. you is there a seconder for that motion councillor Bradley discussion on that councillor Bradley you know, can I thank the presenter for his presentation too from a county councillor's point of view, the fact that we had a long-standing position over two or three years is the disturbing fact to find out that, you know, common sense says that there would be issues on this donation, but just by the nature of, the, of what's happened in this chamber. And, um, and I appreciate uh, what Mr. Gilliland said, because uh, we don't have that information of what's really occurred within the committee process. But, you know, whether it be a landfill that we're opposed to, uh, and there's lots of examples around this room, it seems to me that there should be a process that kicks in to say this should go to the full county council. And so I welcome what uh, Mayor Mitch Charles is bringing forward. And there's no point in, you know, retribution about the past and everything. But it's such a clear issue for us that, um, you know, if I could even add to that, I'm more than willing to reaffirm our longstanding position against uh, industrial wind turbines and the lack of local um, input on the decisions to put them in this community. But I, I applaud what you're doing because I think that's exactly what we need to do. Forget about the past, but this should not have happened. Councillor Case. Well, I also agree with the motion and I was caught 
completely by surprise when I when I saw through the media that this gift had been given to the Creative County Committee and Warwick Township Council was uh, completely, again, surprised and not very happy about the situation. It comes back to communications and I think uh, Mayor McCharles' motion will help with that in the future. But at the same time, you know, when we look at our current system at the county, if somebody wants to donate something to the Heritage Museum, we have a motion within our process to accept the gift. Or to make things surplus, we have a motion to take care of that. So again, I think it was very unfortunate that this was a surprise, that there was no communication whatsoever to the rest of us, that have fought the fought, and especially, especially to my colleague, Lonnie Knapper, whose municipality and the weight group has obviously fought the good fight on this for a long time. So I do welcome the motion, and I do appreciate it, and I hope this never happens again. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Knapper. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Warden uh, Weaver. Yeah, there's lots of things I'd like to say, but I'm not going to say them. I think moving forward, we went into this, and uh, we are an unwilling host. And uh, I think you can take Suncor out of the picture. We're unwilling hosts against wind turbines. We weren't unwilling hosts against, um, what do you call them, Suncor. And uh, I just think this this body has lost all its integrity. If you're an unwilling host, you're in for the long run, or you're in there for lip service. And uh, I think the long run is there's other people coming behind us and a lot larger projects than we've got today. And they look down the road and say, well, uh, these guys are opposing us. They're, they're uh, unwilling hosts. But once we get in there, we'll slip them a few bucks and they'll all go home happy because, uh, but if you think this wind turbines are done in our area, I, th I think it's another thought coming. And I was a little appalled, I guess I did question it and uh, um, I wasn't happy with the answers I got when I did ask who approved this thing. I was, well, I'm gonna say it. I was told I was a sleazy counselor, I think in some kind of words, and but I don't wanna get into that. If I had had an explanation there was four or five of you folks that could have given me this explanation, like I read in their minutes today. I might have been a lot happier today. But I think this all got blown out of proportion, and uh, I think it could have been a, a simple explanation as to, uh, to what uh, uh, went on here. And uh, I, I did, uh, I was accused of one time of, of saying, yes, I was in favor of accepting this money. Well, that never happened. And uh, I would think that uh, I would accept the money in a heartbeat if they come in and done a, a decent study on the migrant birds they're killing or if they replanted the forest they tore up. I could call them good corporate citizens then, but uh, today I can't. And, and I have trouble accepting this, but I do think moving forward I'll support the motion that they got here. But Thank you. Uh, any other discussion on the motion that's on the floor? Any other comments? Would you like the motion read back? Can I ask the clerk to... Uh... I have it recorded as in the future... Uh, all donations or interactions with financial implications pertaining to wind turbines be referred to County Council. Is that a fair Let's go catch? Okay with the mover and the seconder. Is there a yeah. Councillor Bradley? In there that any financial or policy decisions related? Mover and seconder okay with adding in more policy? Councillor Gillis? Uh, thank you, Warden Weber, members of County Council. With regard to the motion and the fact that it's limiting the financials just to wind turbines, I would prefer to see it broadened out. Uh, as a member of the creative community, and I've only been on the creative community for about 18 months um, and learning the process as we go, as I understand it, the policies and procedures and the terms of reference were were 
followed. But that particular creative community was created um, through the direction of this body. So there will be other cash donations, no doubt, that will come to the creative community. So I believe that there shouldn't be just a one-off. I think that there should be a, a broader um, discussion because, as Councillor Case has said, when other cash donations come to, from various sources, uh, County Council signs off on it. So to just isolate one, perhaps, I think, is the wrong direction. I think if you want to have a broader implication, I, I think they need that. I think the creative community needs that direction because prior to this, they were following your previous direction. So I just um, would like to make an amendment to that then, that um, the future donations, what you have read, um, Mr. Cripps, could be broadened out not to just uh, wind turbines, but all cash donations. Okay, I think that would be an amendment to the motion. Uh, are you asking for a, a report and a policy being brought back for acceptance to, further than that, or do you want that included in this motion? That I would it's just like be to all see all for all donations. No, given, given given the sensitivity of this, I would like to see a policy come back to us so that we, we have a, a clear indication of what exactly is happening and how that's going to implement what the creative community does going forward. So because it also states that there is, uh, it, it is an independent body separate from political interference, so it, it, that has to change as well. There's quite a bit to it besides just doing this one-off. I think motion the, for Everything Sorry. has to be looked at. <clears throat> so my motion is, coming back to what you were referring to, that we, we um, give direction under a new policy or perhaps review the terms of reference of how donations are made to the creative community um, so that we don't fall into this, uh, this dilemma again. Okay. Is there a second for that amendment before we go farther? Councillor Hand? Uh, okay. Uh, Treasurer would like to speak to this. Uh, thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, just a matter of clarification. The uh, original motion applied to any transaction involving the county and uh, industrial wind turbines. Uh, your amendment seems to uh, be directing it uh, or restricting this application to simply the creative counties. Was that the intent? No, thank you for that. No, I think we have to be broader than that. Uh, the reason that I create, uh, just isolated to the creative community was falling back on what Councillor Case has said. We do follow that practice. Now, whether we have an actual policy regarding that, I, I don't know. So I'm, I'm at your mercy in that regard. But if we're going to do it for one, we should be doing it for all. So we do have a practice in place with other committees. So now that we have the Creative Community Committee, um, we need to be able to fall in line with what we've done with all of it, to, to have a generality and not to isolate one from the other. Councillor Bradley. This is isolating. This is exactly what Mr. Mayor McCharles' motion is about, which I seconded. It is to send a very clear message. We regret what happened, and we're not going to allow this to happen again on the wind power imposition of industrial turbines in Lambton County. That's the motion that I think you need to support here today. If this committee and others want to bring forward some broader policy dealing with other issues, do that. But today we should deal with the very clear message that needs to go out of this room that says clearly that this was not the message we wanted to send, that we support this type of donation after being in opposition for so long and through the courts on this issue. So I would just urge you to support the motion if you want to do something further, but don't water it down because if you accept the amendment, you're watering down what the message is supposed to be from this motion. Procedurally, we have a motion and an amendment on the floor, so I'd have to either deal with the motion or have that or deal with the amendment or have the amendment withdrawn and we deal with the original motion. Uh, I would, how does uh, the mover want to deal with this? Do we want to have a, a separate motion for a, a further report on a policy being developed? 
Uh, conferring with the, the seconder of the amendment, we have decided that we would like to, that to be separate to the original motion. Okay. And we would like to introduce that following whatever happens with this motion. That's so on the floor. So I noted that the mover and the seconder have withdrawn the motion at this time, and we will vote on the original motion. Yes. Any other discussion on the original motion? I want to read that back once more. The original one. that in the future, all donations and financial or policy decisions pertaining to industrial wind turbines be referred to County Council for its consideration. Councillor Case. Before I vote, please. Okay. Seeing no further discussion, I would uh, call on for a recorded vote. The randomizer selected Councillor Marriott. Deputy Warden McCharles? Yes. Councillor McGugan? Yes. Councillor Knapper? Yes. Councillor Veen? No. Warden Weber? Yes. Councillor Arnold? Yes. Councillor Bushy? Yes. Councillor Bradley? Councillor Broad? Yes. Councillor Brusowicz? Yes. Councillor Case? Yes. Councillor Cook? No. Councillor Gilliland? Yes. Councillor Gillis? Yes. Councillor Hand? Yes. And Councillor McDougall? Yes. That carries. Motion is carried. Do we want to have that follow up motion at this time? Would that be in order? Very good. Yes. Councillor Gillis? I thank you, Warden Weber. Yes, we would like to reintroduce our motion that um, all cash donations, no, I'm sorry, that we should review our policy with regard to cash donations and apply that policy so that that policy can be applied to all committees of county council. There's a seconder for that. that makes sense. Councillor Hand. Any further discussion? It will be a policy brought back for discussion. Councillor Case. So I guess, uh, Mr. Warden, through you to uh, staff, we do have a policy in, in place now when it comes to donations, when it comes to things such as I mentioned before, donations to the museum, art gallery, and so on. I just wonder if there already is something in place that has protected us from that standpoint, being that this committee was arm's length from council. So I guess the question is, does the current policy do what the mover and seconder are asking for? Being the fact that this creative county fund was looked at as outside and separate to the county council function. If you could ask, if I could ask for clarification on that, sir, please. Can we have uh, Mr. Innes? Uh, thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, there are current policies that are in place. Uh, you've seen uh, reporting from uh, staff with regards to this. Um, you know, we do have uh, varying degrees in which it comes up. Uh, we have uh, spontaneous cash donations that are made at uh, the art gallery, um, which, uh, you know, nobody has to approve those before we can say we accept those. Similarly, we have small cash donations that come into the, uh, the museums and other uh, parts of the organization. Again, we do not ask for any sort of vetting of uh, those uh, before they come in. Uh, the only other, see, uh, you know, time that we've had significant cash donations was with regards to the fundraising for the art gallery. Again, the only one who came forward with that was when we received the uh, um, proposal from, uh, the, uh, from Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Alex with regards to uh, offering to provide funds in exchange for naming of uh, the facility. So we have had all sorts of, uh, of um, policies and procedures in place in order to address uh, issues that uh, have come forward. In this particular case, if there had been a requirement or a restriction with regards to the use of the funds, for example, if uh, 
the um, wind farm had indicated that uh, the monies had to be applied to a specific purpose or they had to go to, um, you know, uh, or just a restriction in any way. There, we would not have accepted that. We would have come forward to the council with regards to uh, the amount that was there. This does not mean that there cannot be a tweaking of the policies and everything else, but make it clear the fact that we have had policies in place in order to protect um, the interests of council and uh, to make sure that uh, you know the uh, the needs and uh, the desires of our residents are respected. This is an example of one that was slightly outside of uh, the box, uh, if you would. The motion that was previously passed has essentially addressed that specific anomaly. Um, so, uh, you know, from a staff perspective, we're confident that we have uh, the policies, the procedures, and facilities in place to deal with the most other things that we would come up with. Okay. So, follow up if I can, Mr. Warren. So, I've been here 16 years, and uh, this is the first time that I've ran into this. So I think there are policies in place. I don't want it to ever get so stringent that we're, you know, somebody throws $10 in the jar at the art gallery or one of the museums. Again, I know that would be silly, and I know that's not the intent of the mover and seconder, I'm sure. But it sounds to me like the policies are in place. Again, I've been here for 16 years, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. But at the same time, it seems to have worked. This was a situation because it was a committee that was outside the norm of county council. The, most, the mover and seconder and... Council has taken care of that today. That will never happen again. So from my standpoint, I think we are in good shape with the policies and procedures we have. Again, as Mr. Innes said, you can always tweak to make things better. There's always a better way. But those are my comments. Thank you, sir. Councillor Gillis, it's your motion. I'd like you to speak to it. And... I th uh, thank you. Uh, talking to the seconder and listening to Mr. Innes's explanation, particularly when it comes to um, you mentioned a bit about tweaking, uh, but as it relates to all the other donations that we've received, and we certainly don't want to send out a message that we're not open to donations, um, it seems like we're good with the way things are right now. So uh, we'll withdraw that motion. Are you want to withdraw the motion? Okay. The seconder is withdraw the motion. Councillor Arnold. Thank you, Warden Weber. I'd like to make a motion that we have staff give us a report on how it works. Like I know there's different places, uh, whether it's the libraries, whether it's the museums. I, I would like to see that in a report come back to County Council so we all understand we're at the same starting spot. So I'll make that a motion that we just ask for a report on how things work, who's who in the zoo and what they do. Seconded by Councillor Gillis. Any discussion on that? All in favor of that? That's opposed? Carried. Thank you. Sorry we kept her seat, sitting up here for so long, but I, I believe we've made some Thank you for your headway. Thank you. We have a couple more uh, delegations, and then we're going to take a break for a minute. Um, what are we at? Uh, Jody Boer and Sarah Robert are coming to speak uh, for s uh, some financial support. So I call you up within the bar. And I apologize if I messed up your names. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Jody, and actually, this is Laura. Um, Laura is one of our parents in our gym. Sarah wasn't able to make it today. Um, we're going to start. We're uh, feeling um, that we're going to bring you a happier note today after sitting and listening to your meetings. Um, we're here today in order to request support for a handful of our athletes who have earned a bid to the summit. Um, let me start by telling you about Blue Water Cheer Athletics and some of the benefits of being involved in cheer. We are the only all-star cheer gym in Lambton County. Our athletes range in age from 3 to 18 years and come from all over Lambton County. They're Watford, Wyoming, Sombra, Corona, Brights Grove, Sarnia. We offer both competitive and recreational teams and also have a special needs team in partnership with Pathways Health Center for Children. I'm sure you're aware that there are numerous physical benefits to participation in cheer, increase in strength, coordination, flexibility, and just overall athleticism. 
In addition, we are proud that we are instilling healthy habits, regular exercise, increased water intake, and healthy eating to fuel the body. There are also even more benefits when you include the social and the work skills they gain by participating in team-based activities. We have numerous parents tell us their child's self-confidence and grades improved dramatically after only six months in our gym. In addition, we are promoting leadership skills, teaching time management, encouraging adaptability, and acceptance of constructive criticism. Our athletes understand accountability and how to work under pressure. We're proud of the fact that we feel like we are contributing positively to our future workforce here in Sarnia Lampton. At our gym, we provide a safe and healthy environment. Many of our athletes are in the gym five days a week because it's where they want to be. They volunteer to assist with, assist with coaching younger teams. They come in for extra practice, or they just come in to be themselves. We have open gyms on Friday nights to offer a safe environment. We have our teenage athletes who say they would rather come into the gym and hang with their friends or train, exercise, and it gives them an excuse to the peer pressure they feel for going out to parties and everything else. Cheerleading is one of the largest growing sports, recently being recognized by the Olympic Committee. The Summit, which is the competition we're talking about, is a yearly competition held at the end of the season. It's made up of the best of the best teams from level one through restricted five. They actually have a world's um, competition for the highest levels, so level five to level six. Our gym doesn't have that. We believe in growing our athletes safely. So our athletes right now are levels one through four. The Summit is kind of known as the world's for all of the other levels, those levels one through five restricted. You only get invited to compete if you earn a bid. Statistics show there was a 6% chance of earning a bid in competitions this year, and we earned three of them in our gym. We are the first gym in all of Canada to earn three at the same time. Unfortunately, this comes as an increased cost to our families. Our families have been amazing and are working together to fundraise through various community-based activities, pasta dinner nights, raffles, we have sponsorship packages, bottle drives, etc. You name it, our parents are working hard to do it. We feel attending this competition is an amazing way to put Lambton County on the map and also a great way to celebrate Canada's 150th birthday. We know um, asking for financial support, and you read it, it says it, the competition's in Disney. We aren't able to choose where the competition is. The fact that it's in Disney is, is definitely um, something that makes it even more expensive. We have families on, in our gym who... Um, are on financial plans with us to ensure that their athlete can still compete and still participate, but we assist them as much as possible. This is an added cost that was not budgeted for them. We have families that are single parent households that have two athletes in the gym or families that are the grandparents who have custody of their kids. Um, all of our families, the ones as that maybe don't require the support financially as much, are working hard to support all of those other families. So we would like to present to you as a request for additional support. This is a video that was created. One of our um, family members was able to um, entice a friend to create this video so that we could help with our sponsorship packages. Cheer Athletics is the first all-star gym for cheerleading in the Sarnia Lambton area. We've been open for three years. We're in our fourth season. Um, we are composed of uh, about 105 competitive athletes, and then we also run recreation and a special needs program out of our gym. At our most recent competition, uh, two weeks ago in Birch Run, um, we were surprised and um, uh, just lucky enough to have earned three bids to the summit. 
Um, what we found out afterwards is that we are the first gym in Canada to ever have received three bids. So Summit is, um, in the most basic terms, it's our Olympics. Um, you for most cheerleading competitions, you can just sign up and go. Uh, for Summit, you have to qualify. So they come from all over, whether it be United States, United Kingdom, Canada, um, a variety of places. It's The idea is who they feel is best represented at that competition is chosen. And then you travel down to Disney in May. Um, costs aren't covered. That's something that the athletes do have to pay. Um, they have to uh, stay right down there for a minimum of three days because the competition can begin Friday and it can go until Sunday. We're looking to raise about $60,000, which is a large amount of money. Um, it's going to be very difficult, but uh, we're going to do our best. For anybody who is able to offer any type of support, we truly would appreciate it and thank you. Um, we would love to do anything that we could to help you um, in future. Thank you so much to anybody who um, generously decides to donate to us. We appreciate it more than you know. This is, was a dream of mine when I was a cheerleader, so the fact that I get to share this with these kids is, I can't even put into words how special that is, and they're never ever going to forget this. This is once in a lifetime, and we appreciate any support that you give to us. Six, seven, eight, one, one two, three, four, five, out, seven, go! Thank you. Any uh, questions? I guess this could be referred to the budget process. Would that be uh, the request? If no one has any. Councillor Gillis? I think we need a motion, don't we, to move it to uh, budget? If that's the council's wish to move and it to I, the I budget so process move. with a report? Yes, I would so move. Seconder for that? I'm not going to even say that. Do you want an amount? Councillor Gilliland? Questions? Councillor Bradley? Don't really want to be the bad guy, but uh, this issue has come up year after year, so I want to make sure that we're not misleading you by referring this to budget. Mr. Innes, um, um, <laughs> and, and again, it's, it's, we've always had this philosophy the last number of years that, um, that we only fund capital uh, projects or requests, and I think there's one coming up after. Uh, not, I guess, operating. So I don't want to mislead these people. If, okay. if this is referred, will it be recommended by staff? So, uh, in response to your question, uh, Councillor Bradley, um, this does not. This request does not meet the requirement for council grant. So it would not be presented. Um, um, or there, there's two options basically available with regards to this. If council's uh, direction was to consider it as part of the council grant category that we have each year, no, it does not qualify. That being said, uh, it's always been the, the practice of staff uh, that uh, we do not say no. We can always make a recommendation because council always has the right uh, to make uh, a decision to, uh, to fund an organization if it wished outside of that. So this would be... Um, you know, if it's uh, it would be if it was to be funded, it would have to be funded outside of the council uh, council grant aspect on a, on an ad hoc basis. Okay, thank you for that clarification. And all in favor of that, Councilor McGugan. We're just uh, we're we're sending this to the budget. Uh, I think we understand that it doesn't meet the requirements, but that uh, uh, the grant requirements, and I think they're aware of that, but the, that would be up to council. Okay. All in favor of that? Opposed? <laughs> Let's do that again. <laughs> All in favor of that? Opposed? I'd say that motion is lost. Uh, a question, Councilor McGugan. Yeah, thank you, uh, Warden uh, Weber, members of the County Council. Uh, thank you for that excellent presentation and the enthusiasm that they had. Uh, 
Can you write charitable tax receipts for an individual? <laughs> um, so we do have a sponsorship package letter, which we can absolutely um, leave here. I, actually, I think I saw it almost on on your Word program at the top of your video when he was setting that up. Um, so our gym is a for-profit gym. Fundraising that's being done, though, none of it is coming through our gym. So, yes, we can write a receipt, but it does not have the HST number or anything attached to it, if that makes sense to you. It is just... Blue, uh, so there's, the parents have set up a, um, a bank account um, and absolutely are acknowledging um, and also putting on, uh, they have t-shirts that they're going to wear down in the summit and also for the candidate parade with the sponsorships on the back, banners being created with the sponsorships and absolutely a receipt will come to you that says whether or not it's claimable because there's no HST number on it, I'm not sure. You. You're welcome. Councilor Bradley? You know, again, I, th I think the, the vote was fair because I wouldn't want to mislead you to think that money's going to be there. But we do have the opportunity to sponsor. Mm -hmm. You know, Lampton County, if this group is to go, that we could be one of the sponsors as requested in this letter, if that would assist. And Mr. Van Horn, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but the county has sponsored different events, um, I, I believe, in the past. Uh, you know, as a sponsor, and you get the credit for it, whether it be the, the Great Lakes <laughs> mayors coming here or other groups. And uh, I just wonder if that's something that's within your discretion to do at the staff level, or do you need direction from us to look at a sponsorship of this group? Because it is, and I think again, we get back to this policy criteria, it is an international event, it does bring international recognition to the, to the people participating and to the communities. Uh, it's, in terms of the, the dollars involved, it's somewhat of a, I call it a gray area, when each of the wardens is in office, he or she will be asked for sponsorships for different events. Sometimes it's buying uh, advertising in their publications, that sort of thing. We've never had a, a problem with it as, as staff, certainly if it's, you know, kind of under $1,000 sort of thing. Uh, with respect to the wardens, uh, again, uh, they typically have operated in that kind of 500 to $2,000 range as well. Uh, beyond that, um, Typically, there's some discomfort uh, with larger amounts, so it gets brought to county council for consideration. So small amounts, yes, we have discretion, and we have done things like uh, buying ads and, and publications and that sort of thing, or giving uh, small out outside grants potentially, but uh, anything bigger has always come to council. I'd be willing to move if it helps the warden, in the new, newly in the position, that we look at a gold sponsorship at $1,000. $1,000. That doesn't. So is that a, a motion? Yes. Or it, it, I think for your own sake, it might be better. Why is that to be a motion? Is there a, is there a seconder for that, Councillor Gillis? That we do a gold sponsorship for a thousand dollars, and that gets its name and logo and recognition at the event. Questions on that? All in favor of that? Opposed? That is carried. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. Yeah. Uh, congratulations on your successes so far, and we wish you well in the, in the future in the competition. Awesome. Thank you. We have one more, uh, one more grant request, and this is uh, from the Sarnia Lampton Rebound, and I would ask those folks to come forward now to make that presentation. Yeah, the clerk will do that. Will they'll? All right, start up. <laughs> okay. going to say when we do a break we can... yep very good 
proceed. Well, good morning, everyone. I'll have to push the button. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Terry Thomas Van Oss, and I'm just here to um, share the work of the Hub. You may remember us from last year. We told you about an idea that we were working on as part of a collaborative with Lampton County, a uh, variety of services and providers. So today we have an update and to let you know the great things that have been happening and to further support our request for capital funding. Thank you, Terry. I, I'm Jaylene Poirier. I was hired as the program coordinator for the Hub. So we started with 21 community partners, and today we sit with 35 around the table. This is a project that the community wants to invest in and is excited to invest in. Over the last few months, the construction has been ongoing, and it's finally coming to a finish. The dream of the hub is becoming a reality and we open the doors on February 13th. We are open to all youth ages 16 to 24, six days a week. Our hours are three to eight, Monday to Friday and one to nine on Saturdays. Our work as child and youth care workers starts with meeting the youth where they're at and meeting all their basic needs first. We will teach those basic life skills to help the youth better succeed and to be able to be a contributing member of our community. We offer a hot meal every day, as well as a shower facility and laundry as well. We will offer programming all six days, ranging from CMHA, Ontario Works, and St. Clair Child and Youth Services, to baking, budgeting, and martial arts. We run, a, we run on a youth engagement model as youth are the experts about their own needs. We have a youth advisory committee that meets once a month to see what the community's needs and desires are at that time. The hub will reflect that by being a supportive, inclusive and responsive space. Today we have two of our three youth advisors here, so I'd like to turn the mic over to them. Hi everyone, my name is Shelby Griggs and I was hired as a youth advisor for the Hub in September. Before I begin, I would like to read a personal story from Shaylin, another one of our fellow youth advisors who isn't here today, on her journey with the Hub. Shaylin became involved with the Hub in January 2016. She wanted to find a way to help her fellow youth in this community because she has always felt very alone with her mental illness. Shaylin struggled with anxiety and depression um, during, Shaylin struggled with anxiety and depression during high school and needed to find help. She experienced the process of searching for a place that would help her through her daily struggles. And although she did find a good counselor, she felt as though she didn't have the connection to other youth that she really needed. The hub is something she holds close to her heart and feels is very important. She expressed that the hub has given her a chance to help create the ideal space she's always wished that youth like herself could have. She looks forward to seeing how the hub will benefit the youth in this community. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Lawrence. I'm very fortunate to have been one of the other uh, youth advisors hired on the hub project. So as you can see uh, by the timelines in front of you, the project has gone from an idea around a table to a reality in a very short period of time. About six months ago, just before the beginning of phase two, we hadn't even finalized the decision for a location for the hub. Now we have a space that will be finely tuned, beautifully furnished, and designed to fit the needs of any youth that attend. This project, however, will not merely serve the needs of the youth that attend. It is our hope that the hub will stand as a symbol of Sarnia Lambton's exceptional ability to unite to serve a common good. Growing up as a youth from the county, it's amazing to see this all come together. And um, I know from personal experience that youth who grow up in the county do not really have accesses to services unless they have a vehicle and um, that happens after they're 16 or their parents can bring them, which doesn't happen that often. 
Um, the hub will benefit all who are involved. The youth will receive assistance directly and forge positive relationships with peers and volunteers. We'll have the enriching opportunity to provide a positive impact in the lives of youth. You may be wondering how we will track the success of the hub. Even now, the R Lounge continues to track attendance and the hub will continue this data collection. In addition, we will track what resources are being utilized by the youth and what materials, hygiene items, office materials, and so forth are being used. But success comes in many forms, and we'll also track the progress by noticing successes in the lives of our youth that attend. Improved health or sense of well-being, acquisition of a job or application for post-secondary school are all examples of such milestones. So the drop-in nature of the hub is very intentional in order to serve all youth, no matter what their needs are. In particular, transient, transitional age youth can best be serviced by such a model. Having services that are located in a single area can help to reduce this transience and add to the stability of the lives of struggling youth. In conclusion, I'd like to tell you a story of another youth uh, that reflects some of the success of this, this drop-in model. So this is Phil's story. This youth utilizes our lounge at Rebound right now and will be moving over to the hub once it opens. His experience with Rebound began three months ago. This 20-year-old youth was homeless with no hope. He had been to our lounge just once before, about over a year ago, but only stayed for about 20 minutes. He came back to meet a friend there and ended up reconnecting with the program coordinator of the R Lounge. She connected him to resources to help him with what he was struggling through. He started seeing an addictions counselor and getting assistance for housing. He's now searching for employment, but is for now living off social assistance. Since he cannot afford to eat every day, he knows that he can come to R Lounge for a hot meal, and later he will be able to come to the hub to get showers, laundry services, and uh, connections to other services to help meet his basic needs. He personally told us that our lounge has changed his life for the better, and the staff are great at what they do and really make you feel as though they care about your life, not just their job. This youth also expressed that he feels the hub is very important and needed within our community. As of today, he is still struggling through some issues. He was on the verge of relapse, but he knew he could come to the R Lounge and vent and feel better in a safe space. He has a place to live now and is going to attend the hub when Lambton College comes to present about academic upgrading to get set up on the path to post-secondary education in the child and youth care worker program at Lambton College. Thank you. To end, we will know the hub is successful when youth from Sarnia Lambton and in the county are receiving the services that they need to help them on their path. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Is there any questions, Councillor Bradley? I'm going to move the request to, to budget. I think this is because it's a specific grant request that is, uh, will be part of the budget process. Does it need a motion to do that? Yes? Okay. Moved by Councillor Bradley, seconded by Councillor McDougall. Councillor Case. Yeah, Mr. Warden, I have a question uh, through you to our guests. And again, love Rebound, great organization. I've had a little bit to do with it. Uh, Jack Poirier got me involved a little bit on some fundraising back a while ago. Question I have, Lambton County is a big county. I think this is a great idea. And it's really good for the immediate Sarnia and surrounding area as far as what I'm seeing from the hub. What are your plans to try to engage and bring people in to this hub from all of the county? Again, very supportive of what you're doing. Don't take it the wrong way, folks. I think it's great. We're just interested to see what, the, what maybe the strategy is in trying to be able to get other people from outside of the county and being able to utilize this space. I know there's all kinds of situations as far as transportation and all those things. So just a question. Again, thank you. So yes, I'm actually uh, very glad that you asked that because that is that is part of what we're hoping to do with the hub is it, it, we're recognizing that it is uh, the entire county of Lambton. 
So one of the items that we are requesting in, in the budgeting is a uh, van, a van for transportation, so we can bring in uh, county youth. We're also uh, requesting some um, electronic services. We're hoping to get some, uh, I believe it's part of a computer lab, so that we can provide electronic services for, for youth, um, electronic forms, uh, referral forms for youth in the county that might not be able to come in just for those brief um, intakes. Um, We're looking to yeah. utilize this technology for things such as FaceTime or Skype for those youth who do need the face-to-face -face contact but can't get to us. Yep. Follow-up, Councillor Case? Follow-up, Mr. Ward, if I can. A very good answer, and thank you for that. But I would encourage you folks to maybe get out and see the local councils as well because we've had some experience with rebound and we've had some information as I said Jack Boy was out to see us not that long ago just to maybe uh, brief everybody of course us as mayors will go back to our municipalities and tell them but I think it would be important to further communicate that into the county as best you can so thank you for your answer and good luck thank you, you. Councillor McDougall Yes, Ward Marie Beer and members of County Council, and thank you to the uh, Rebound presenters this morning for your presentation. Um, I've had a long knowledge and partnership with Rebound because many years ago you were located in the community centre that I've managed, and I have had great respect for your work and believe that this is a program that is really going to provide critical support to disenfranchised youth and I'm happy to see that. Um, I've been away um, from uh, direct affiliation from Rebound, but I have understood in the past that you have had programs that you've done satellite out in the county. Are you still doing that is my first question. Are you still out in some of the outlying areas and so you have reached to get to kids directly? Yes, we still have some satellite programs. <laughs> um, uh, Petrolia? And we also have, um, there's a GPS uh, in Forest, which is our Youth Engagement uh, Council. Okay. So, um, I understand the business of the $35,000 to purchase a van. And I think that um, uh, if you do make those connections through rebound programming out in the county, you can build relationships. And, yeah, it's great to have FaceTime, but there is nothing like a hot meal. And there's nothing like real human face-to-face -face contact and I think that's most of all what I have regarded very highly about rebound is uh, we think we can make contact electronically but when you're in crisis you need a caring heart you need somebody to wipe your tears away and somebody to put some warm food in your belly and that's really really important I do have a question however about um, uh, the the first page talks about operating dollars um, to support this long term and I've had also intimate knowledge of great programs that started with rebound funded by Trillium and once the funding ended boom there was the end of the programming how confident is your group that you're going to get your annualized funding so that if we make the investment of public tax dollars into your facility that you're going to achieve um, the annualized operating dollars I read in your report that you have one year, but what's the plan after that? And uh, how, what kind of success have you made towards that end? And the only other thing I'd say is if you do score more success before we get to budget, please let us know, okay? Thank you. Do you have a, a comment? <clears throat> respond to that so we are very excited to let you know and I will provide an update post this meeting but on February 10th we have actually been asked by the Lynn and the Ministry of Children and Youth Services for a tour of the hub prior to the grand opening on the 13th so we have um, some interest and hopefully some potential annualized dollars that will come as a result of that partnership um, or that inquiry. The other thing I can just let Council know is that we are just on the final stages, hopefully this afternoon as we meet with the Youth Advisory Committee, to extend another member of the committee to include Access Open Minds, which is a Pan-Canada Children's Mental Health Initiative that's looking to standardize children's mental health access and evaluation to service. 
um, and have them come on board as a committee member as well. And so they've had the great uh, advantage of being able to leverage other funding throughout other um, provinces across Ontario. So we're very excited that their association with our hub will help advance and secure annualized dollars. Follow up, Councilor McDougall. Yes, thank you very much for your uh, response to that. Have you an annualized operating budget um, predicted for the future yet? What we have at this point is a projection because the doors don't actually open until February 13th. So we do have an anticipated cost that we will incur this year. And I mean, it's somewhat difficult to fully predict based on volume and utilization and other unexpected expenses that we will be able to make more accurate projections going forward to anticipate a, a fully, a very fulsome annualized budget. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a motion on the floor to refer this uh, to budget. All in favor of that? That is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. We'll uh, continue on. And I'm going to call for a five-minute recess here. We've had a no recess. <laughs> We've got to take a break. We've been here for two hours, so uh, I will bang the gavel in six minutes.
don't jump, Robin. I said, I said six minutes. <laughs> that's, that's your two-minute warning. December 2nd, how does council want to deal with those? Moved by Councillor Broad, seconded by Councillor Cook. Any questions on those two sets of minutes? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Correspondence. We have uh, item A is a power generation and a Pickering nuclear power station. Item B is uh, Elizabeth Wood McDonald regarding public meeting and draft plan. Item C is uh, uh, municipal uh, and stakeholder relations uh, and the assessment update for municipal summary report. Item D is physician recruitment task force. Also have a letter of concern from January 24th regarding the plan and a letter from Cohen Hiley regarding the draft plan. How does council want to deal with those Headings of correspondence, Councillor Bean. Seconded by Councillor McCharles. Questions? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Information reports, item 11, on page 142 of the agenda, regarding the Green Committee activity report. It's looking for a motion to receive and file. Councillor Case. Seconded by Councillor Boucher. Any other questions? All in favor? That's carried, thank you. Items not requiring a motion, that their uh, information. Uh, item number 12, page 148 of the agenda. Uh, Councillor Gillis? Receive and file. Move to receive and file. Seconded. Councillor Bean, any questions? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Item 13, Corporate Services Division. This is a, a report regarding the BRNI Connect to Innovation application. Mokin, there's a recommendation uh, in that report. Am I going too quick? There's a, a recommendation at the end of that that council endorse the attached letter of support. Councillor McGugan? Moving that recommendation. Seconded? Councillor Bean? Questions? Councillor Arnold? Thank you, Mary. Very much, uh, Warden Weber. Just in your note, you speak about uh, wardens involved, and I just, uh, you're number five, Warden. That's been involved in that initiative, and the first one, and in, in, uh, our CAO, Ron Van Horn, will remember our previous warden, uh, Jim Burns, I believe was even the one that introduced this concept at the Western Wardens, and it was based a lot going back into uh, what the Eastern Wardens did, and then when I took the mantle over from Jim, uh, we got into a very many heated discussions over the amount of transfer speed, and the Western Wardens, they were stuck on 10 uh, megabits per second was the maximum that they were endorsing and I was digging in pretty hard at one gigabyte and so now as, uh, as things evolved and, and uh, Warden Case and the work that he did and then Warden McDougall made sure that the one gigabyte stayed and became part of the norm and I appreciate all the work that's gone on. I also appreciate the Blue Water folks and uh, their initiative going forward I understand too and I appreciate that the majority of the members of County Council are stakeholders and shareholders in the Blue Water Initiative that's being applied for as far as this grant. And I guess my concern is that this uh, grant that they're applying for is going to be in direct competition with my municipality who's been working now for eight years in regards to high speed internet. We also have spent $50,000 for this uh, grant itself. The first was the engineering that we went out and did on our own. 
And the second is in regards to uh, consulting fees that we're paying now to have the application finalized. And hopefully with uh, some wisdom from the federal government folks who have volunteered their services to review the application before it goes in to ensure we haven't missed anything, then uh, we may be a successful uh, community. And I say that because we are an underserviced area in our part of the community that we are looking at. No one else came to the table over these eight years that could do anything for the people in uh, the south end of my community. Uh, Blue Water Power, I did meet with them uh, a couple of months ago now, and our initial meeting was that, you know, they wanted to try and help us out in St. Clair Township, but they said it'd be five years before they got there. And that was one of the things that propelled us as a community to move forward on our own because we cannot wait five years to get uh, proper connectivity for our people. And I, I noticed that uh, um, Mayor Mc McGugan was the one that made this motion, but I also understand that in Brook Telecom, they're applying into the same grant program. So, you know, there's a, to me there's a conflict, but I don't know for sure. However, uh, I'm not going to stand in anyone's way as far as a letter of support, but I would ask that you would recognize me after we have a vote on this, and I'm going to ask for a letter of support from this council for the efforts of um, my own council at home in uh, their application process. Thank you. Councilor McDougall. Yes. Um, Warden Weber and members of County Council, and uh, Steve, I thank you for um, your uh, discussion here this morning and also some of the discussions we've had previously. Um, SWIFT uh, broadband project of, of uh, Western Wardens that County Council knows received funding um, discussed the Connect to Innovate program at our last board meeting and uh, the, um, the SWIFT board um, and its executive director are encouraging all people applying for funding to work with SWIFT, which is how I first came back and uh, talked to uh, uh, Councillor Arnold about making sure that um, they had all the support that they needed. Um, and I think letters of support are important. I'm understanding through SWIFT that the Connect and through my discussions with uh, Councillor Arnold that uh, letters of support from the community are going to be very, very important to all proponents applying so that uh, I'm going to be um, enthusiastically supporting uh, uh, the County of Lambton providing letters to anybody applying because we're here for all 11 members of the Federation and anybody and any group that is uh, uh, any municipality that's trying to increase um, their funding opportunities and their service to their people to that last mile challenge should be supported. So uh, this first letter is great, Warden Weber, but you're probably going to have to sign a few more before you're finished. And um, I did appreciate Mr. Uh, Cribbs, I believe, who said that this letter of support uh, to the Blue Water um, Regional Network was non-binding, non-exclusive letter of support from Lambton County. So, um, you know, it's sort of a, it's a support for the application, but at the end of the day, um, SWIFT wants to support its partners who are trying to increase connectivity, and I think it's important that we do the same at the upper tier. So um, I think that uh, this is a timely discussion and I think it's important that we don't limit ourselves to this application only. Um, because while it seems to be suggesting its umbrella, clearly in the case of St. Clair Township, it's not. And um, for all the two years that I have been in discussion with the small independents, uh, we wanted a fair, and, uh, um, a fair process that wasn't going to squeeze anybody out. So this Connect to Innovate program needs to support in a similar fashion any and all who are trying to increase their funding. Thank you. Mr. Van Horn. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, further to um, uh, the, the comments from Councillor uh, uh, Arnold and, and McDougall, uh, staff had the same concern as has been raised about whether uh, if we supported one application, we were harming others in the community. And we were 
assured and very strong, uh, no uh, no exceptions that it, that it would not. They encouraged everybody who has any opportunity at all in their community to to make application for the grant money, and uh, that would be favorably re uh, viewed by by anybody uh, along along the chain of command in terms of approval of the grant. So, we had the same concern. It was very clear, to, made very clear to us that that you're not harming uh, one group by supporting another, and that anyone who has any interest in it at all should be trying to get approvals from from bodies such as the, the county government. Follow up, Councilor McDougall? Yeah. If I could just, uh, as I was reviewing this material last night, um, has the county then had a chance to see the Blue Water Regional Network application or are they just looking for support up front? Because I've understood from SWIFT and also in my conversation with uh, um, Councilor Arnold that this is a pretty laborious uh, application process. So has the county had a chance to see this application yet that we're supporting? Uh, I Certainly I have not. I don't believe that staff have uh, had an opportunity to review it. it. Like we're quite cognizant of the fact that Blue Water Power only has services in whatever percent of the county in terms of the geography. So it's really up to them to put the case together. Okay. Councillor Case. Just a very quick point, not to belabor this whole thing, but Mr. Warden, now that you're part of the Western Wardens Caucus, I guess maybe we'll look forward to hearing from you and maybe what's going on with SWIFT in the future and over the next two years, because I think we have to keep an eye on the ball when it comes to that organization from timelines and so on. So I'll just leave that comment with you, sir, and look forward to hearing back from you. Thank you. I will try to do that. Councillor Knapper. Yes, can I just get a little clarification on this? In the last two weeks, I must have received at least 60 uh, emails asking to support this, and I was confused as to, to where it was coming from. Like, uh, but this, they seem to have a lot of support uh, from all over the, the county there on this. Yes, uh, I received the same emails, I believe, and they were computer generated uh, from the discussion that I had with one reply. Uh, any other discussion on the motion? It's for the recommendation. All in favor of that? That is carried. And a further motion, Councillor Arnold. I would humbly ask that uh, County Council provide a letter of support to the St. Clair Township application for this funding as well. Second by Councillor Broad. Questions? All in favor? That's carried. <coughs> And we're moving on to committee minutes, and Councillor Arnold had to leave. So, um, AM committee minutes, I would call on uh, Chair. Who did AM? <laughs> yes, uh, thank Councilor you. Gillis. Thank you, Warden, uh, Warden Weber, and members of County Council. Um, I see the confusion with uh, my name. Um, as chair of the EAM committee, we met on January the 18th. We discussed and debated for about an hour and a half with very fruitful uh, discussions and debate, and I present these minutes for your, uh, for your consideration. Thank you. Item one, correspondence received and filed. Any questions? Item two, there's one the correspondence be denied. Item three, Councillor Broad. Thank you, Warden uh, Weaver and members of Council. I have a, a question on this, uh, on item three, and I also have a recommendation. Uh, question on uh, item three, and it's unfortunate Steve's not here. I believe when this report was asked where the money went to for this, uh, where the tree planting money went to, Steve brought up the uh, indication that the staff uh, sorry, St. Clair Region staff wages was to come out of this money, and I didn't see where that was addressed in that report. Uh, I presume Steve was around when this money was first uh, allocated out, and I presume that's where he got that information from. So I, if somebody from staff could uh, give us an indication whether that was part of the original agreement with this money. Who would like to speak to that? Mr. Cole? Uh, 
Council Broad through through the warden. Um, yes, I, uh, your understanding, um, uh, whether that was part of the original request or not, I do recall there being some discussion around that. Uh, the uh, the focus of that report certainly addressed many of the concerns that that had been brought forward about how we were proceeding with with um, uh, review and assessment of the of the lots and uh, how those were being uh, the costs that were being associated with it. Uh, the specific report and the discussion that was had uh, back at the committee meeting uh, didn't specifically uh, didn't specifically uh, f go further into uh, the Sinclair Region Conservation Authority uh, partnership. Uh, but if that's something that council wants to delve into per further, we can certainly do that. Just to follow up on that, yes, I think we should go further with it because uh, I know the request made seven, eight months ago was where did that money go and what was it being used for? So I think we should follow through with that request and let's find out where that money does go and what it's being used for. I do see the tree planting part of it, but if it's supposed to go towards the wages of uh, the St. Clair Region staff, why aren't we putting it there? Uh, next follow-up that I have is I have a recommendation. As you can well imagine, uh, there was a great report there of a parcel of land out in my municipality that was being bulldozed and cleared. Uh, it went through the process. Great process. We, I, what my recommendation is, the local county or the local council needs to know that information ahead of time. Because as you could well imagine, excavator moves in, bulldozer moves in. And all of a sudden, I'm getting these phone calls about this bush lot. Why is it being cleared? All this information. Well, of course, then I start the process calling the county to find out why. My recommendation is that before this, as this is being approved, and once it's been approved, that the report and the recommendation get sent down to the local council that it is affected by the, the decision so that we have the information there for when the, the rate payers or whoever calls us, that we have that information available to us. Thank you. Okay, so I'd like to make that a motion. Make it a motion. Councillor Case has seconded that. Are we clear what the motion is for? It's for a further report, I believe, on where the costings and, and the dollars are going to, as well as a communication process for notifying local municipalities after decisions have been made. Any other questions? All in favor of that motion? That's carried. We can make motions while we're doing the minutes. If that's proper procedures. Okay. Item number four regarding the road uh, reconstruction update. Item number five is correspondence. Item number six, information report on the virus, Zika virus. Item number Seven, regarding Safe Roads Winter Driving Campaign. Item number eight, request for surplus amb ambulance donations. Item nine, progress of uh, the Resident Withdrawal Management Detox Center. We've had our discussion on that this morning. Item 10, is the Resident Withdrawal Management again. Item 11, correspondence. Item 12, the Maker's Space project update. Item 13, uh, Canada's tentative list for the World Heritage Site. Item 14, County's asset management plan budget process. Councillor Fifth, er, number 15 is the in camera item. 16 and 17 is to open up. Item 18 for the adjournment. Seeing no further questions, I would call on Councillor Gillis. Uh, thank you, Warden Weaver. I ask that the minutes with the changes be approved by this council. Seconder for that, Councillor McDougall. Questions? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, the PM uh, committee meetings, uh, Councillor McDougall, to present those. Uh, Warden uh, Weber, members of County Council, the afternoon uh, committee with the very long name of Long-Term Care, Finance, Facilities, Court, and Social Services um, met on the afternoon of January 18th, 2017, and I present to you the uh, day's minutes. Item 1, correspondence. Item 2, quality resident 
inspections. Item three, correspondence. Item four, regarding fees and fee schedules. Item five, correspondence. Number six, asset management plan. Number seven is the year-end report on reserves. Number eight is correspondence from social services. Number nine is information reports. Number 10, regarding Lambton College pilot projects. Number 11 is in camera. 12, 13, and 14 are dealt with in camera. Item 15 and 16 is the motion to adjourn. Any questions? Councilor McDougall. Warden Weber, members of County Council, I move the adoption of uh, that day's minutes. Seconder for that. Councilor Bean, questions? All in favor? Carried. Thank you. We have the Creative County Committee mini minutes. I guess I would call on the chair, uh, Councillor McDougall, to present those minutes. And members of County Council, the Creative County Committee met on the morning of January 23rd, 2017, and I would present to you um, their that day's minutes for uh, information for Council. I don't believe we adopt these minutes. These are just received for information. So uh, if that's, uh, that is your motion, that they be received for information. Is there a seconder for that? Councillor Knapper? Any questions on them? Councillor Knapper? Uh, I'd like to thank the committee for um, a well-written report here, and uh, it certainly answered a lot of my questions I had. If I had had this report back at the start of this whole fiasco, it would have saved a lot of problems. And I hope this report was was available at that time and not written after. Thank you. Good, thank you. I think there will be a, uh, revisions addressing the concerns. Do you have a comment? Yes, thank you, Mr. Warden. The one motion in particular is motion number three, and uh, it, it speaks to the ability to uh, accept uh, independent cash donations, but the wording is going to have to be amended to make it in uh, comply with the motion that was passed earlier this morning. So the motion would have added on to the bottom something to the effect of it being subject to any acceptance or reporting restrictions placed on it by county council. So we won't end up with the set of minutes that are in conflict potentially with what you passed earlier then. Okay. Councillor Gillis? Yes, yeah, so I'd like to make that amendment. I noticed that right away. Do we amend these minutes or does the committee bring it? Or do we make a new we motion? Can okay. Can we, we move that we uh, amend these minutes to reflect the decision of County Council this morning? Exactly. Seconder for that. Councillor McCharles? Councillor Cook? Po point of order, Madam Mr. Chair. Um, the, uh, is this correct? Like, uh, can we be accepting these minutes as is and then any further amendment has already been made by this council to go forward to the next as opposed to amending the minutes of the minute of the, the meeting now. Can we do that? You're certainly capable. Someone's got to turn off his mic. Here. Go for it. <laughs> In a, a narrow technical sense, the minutes are reflections of what was said that day. So. From that perspective, yes, it's the committee that created them that should be amending the minutes. But as a practical matter, everything ultimately, the buck stops here always. And you can amend the instructions or, or the decision of that committee uh, so that it be in compliance with your wishes. Right now, as it reads, it conflicts with what you've already approved this morning. So we certainly want to address or absolve that. So if, if we rephrase that slightly to say that you're not amending the minutes, but you're a, yeah, amending uh, council's instruction will be fine, for instance. Councillor Case? Not to prolong this, we've had lots of discussion, but I don't think you can do that under the Roberts rules. I think the minutes are the minutes, 
and they stay the minutes of that day. We've now made a motion today to change the process moving forward. I could be wrong, but I'm a little confused because under yeah. Robert's rules, again, we're going back in time. It'd be great if I could do that in lots of decisions in my <laughs> life. I may have turned out better than I have. But at the same time, I just, I guess I'm asking, I'm asking you as clerk to advise us on that because the, all the time I've been involved with uh, chairing, I've never seen that done before. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Warden. The question comes to the challenge of how it is that committee reports to this council. Uh, and it's terms of reference. Are you simply receiving and filing these minutes? Mm -hmm. Or are you actually approving? Because your committee AM and PM, everyone's got a good handle that half of you make decisions, it comes here, and then the other half, you as a whole, can vary as you wish. If you're simply receiving and filing, if it's not subject to your control, that's the, uh, that is what the warden said. You're you're correct, but ultimately, this is a body that you've created, um, and in fact, its relationship to this council is something that it was considering at that last meeting, and where obviously you've you've considered it this morning as well. Uh, so that that's the. the that answers uh, Councillor Case's immediate question. It's the nature of your relationship and what you want that to be to this committee that says whether or not you can amend that or you just have to receive those minutes, but regardless, you've passed a motion uh, with which it has to comply in the future. I guess I've been asked on a point of order and I'm going to rule. I think we are receiving these minutes as a receive and file under the terms of reference from the Creative County Committee that has been in place since its creation. There is some, some recommendations in there about changing the reporting method and going forward and whether we approve them or whether we don't will be part of what council decides when we make those changes. So uh, the motion on the floor is just to receive these for information at this time. Uh, and, uh, uh, I, yes, point, point of order to yep. your point of order, if I may. Point of order, my, it does, that's, that's The good. terms of reference do say that the creative committee is uh, functioning independently. So Councillor Case is quite right. Yes. <laughs> so, these minutes are being received as for information as they have been uh, presented by the committee. All in favor of that? That's carried. Thank you. And they will go back to the committee and they will deal with the county motion at the committee. So, that's and change their terms. Uh, we have uh, one more. Uh, We've passed around, we've had our striking committee prior between the in-camera session. So I would call on, uh, in the absence of uh, Chair Arnold, uh, Deputy Warden McCharles to present these minutes for our approval. Thank you, Mr. Warden, members of County Council. The striking committee met this morning and uh, I present the minutes for your consideration. Sec uh, there's no second. Uh, item number one. Item number two and item number three any questions deputy warden mccharles i move the adoption of this day's minutes seconder councillor broad any further questions all in favor that's carried thank you item number 15 is items tabled from previous meetings and this is the regarding the uh, draft official plan consultation and where am I on this one there's been a request from the committee Councillor McDougal Yes, Warden Weaver, members of County Council, if you're looking for somebody to move the recommendation from the report uh, February 1st from the OP Review Committee, yep. uh, then I'd be pleased to move that for you. Seconded by Councillor Cook. Any questions to that? The committee's doing great work in going through the process, doing it page by page. It's taking some time uh, on this uh, recommendation with tables it till then. We have to lift it from the table first. OK. 
Okay, procedurally, we need the motion to lift it from the table. Councillor Case, second by Councillor Marriott. All in favor of that? That's carried. Now we need a motion to accept the recommendation which uh, extends the deadline to April 5th. Moved by Councillor Veen, seconded by Councillor Han. Questions? All in Councillor Knapper. Uh, does the committee feel that's long enough period of time with the amount of work that's got to be done yet? I guess that was the feeling at the committee the day we were there. Uh, we are um, two-thirds of the way through it, or, or more, and I think we can come back with that. All in favor of the motion? That's carried. Thank you. So we did tables and lifting notices of motion. I see none uh, listed. Other business? We've dealt with the striking committee. Notice of bylaws. What am I doing back? Yep. Yeah. We did the striking committee minutes. Uh, Councilor McCharles, and who seconded the striking committee? Sorry. Councilor Rod. <laughs> Maybe I'm. We'll get in rhythm here. Anyway, notice of bylaws. Oh, oh I have a question. Councilor McGugan. Not a question, it's just new business. I would like to say thanks uh, for whoever, I guess it's the culture group that uh, made that uh, maker space uh, program around the county. Uh, I did have a chance to attend it at my local library. It was well attended by young people and middle-aged and some older people. And, I mean, I'm baffled by that whole system, but there were young uh, boys and girls there, four years old, playing with the marbles, and they made them work. So I say thanks, whoever made that all happen. I think it's just great uh, as we look down the road to the future, and there'll be some parts of that whole program I understand in every library uh, for the rest of this year and next year. Hopefully I'm correct in that. So I say thanks. It's uh, well noted. Uh, it's moving around. So, uh, Councillor Knapper. Yeah, just a reminder to all the county councillors, there's a rule game meeting following this uh, yeah. um, this meeting when it gets over. Sure. Today. Any other new business or public service announcements? Notice the bylaws. Uh, call on the clerk. Thank you, Warden. There are four bylaws before County Council this morning, three substantive and one confirming. There is also a motion moved by Councillor Gilland and seconded by Councillor Cook that bylaws numbers four through seven of 2017 as circulated be taken as read a first and second time. All in favor? That's carried. Warden, there's also a motion moved by Councillor Veen and seconded by Councillor Knapper that bylaws numbers 4 through 7 of 2017 as circulated be taken as read a third time and finally passed. Questions? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. And we have the adjournment. Uh, it's a note on here that the OGRA meeting or OGRA conference is... Uh, the day before or the day of this meeting. The budget meeting is scheduled to start at 9 o'clock. If council wishes to move it to 1 o'clock or keep it at 9, we will have to uh, be back from those that are going to the OGRA conference. Councillor Case. I will make that motion to move it to 1 o'clock. We'll see if we get a second during some discussion on that, Mr. Warden. Second by Councillor Gilliland. Any questions or discussion? We have uh, procedures wise the ability to make notice and do that? Yes. Okay. Any question? Yes, is that sufficient time? There could be uh, adversary weather condition and so on. So I'm not sure whether the, the time picked is, uh, is, is actually be helpful if we have some adverse weather conditions. Well, you know. But, but why cancel the meeting when we can move it a little bit further out? Maybe bad weather then, too, Andy. <laughs> okay. No, but, but, but you've got a time, we know. So. The motion is to move it to 1 o'clock, because uh, I guess we'll deal with weather when weather happens. Councillor Knapper. 
Yeah, what's the expectation? How long do you feel we're going to uh, set aside for doing the budget? Is it going to be one day or two days or three days? This way you're cutting it down to a half a day. Then you're going to have to come back for another meeting. Councilor <laughs> Mr. Innes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Warden. Uh, to answer Councilor Knapper's question, um, as has been our practice for as long as I've been here and potentially longer, uh, we set aside uh, a Wednesday morning to uh, traditionally to discuss the budget. Uh, we do have a second day. That would be the Thursday of the following week, which is already set up in the calendar as a tentative uh, date if additional uh, discussion is required. So uh, the short answer would be that uh, if you move the meeting to 1 o'clock and uh, you reach a point where you feel that uh, you need to cease discussions for that day and defer it to a second day, we already have a second day set up and uh, ready to go. Okay. Motion's on the floor to uh, move the budget meeting from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. to uh, uh, help out with the Good Roads Convention. Councillor Gillis. Uh, thank you, Warden Weaver. Uh, I do have a question, not, not with regarding to the timing, but because we're in a new process, could someone refresh my memory as to when we're actually going to receive the budget books? Between the uh, committee meetings so on, they're, the, on, on in February. two weeks. So we're only going to have two weeks to review the, the, the budget. Okay, good to know. Okay. Councillor Bukowitz. I'm going back again to it because I believe the program is running till about noon on Wednesday. So is this our expectation? We'll, we'll be able to make it in an hour back? Well, I, uh, like I, I was just mentioning, I'm, I may be forced to, to get my own private helicopter or something because, you know. Okay. Councillor Case. I have made the motion, and again, there's a motion on the floor, but in talking to my seatmate here, who is on the Roma, or pardon me, on the Good Roads Board, it will make it very impossible for him to make it back. So in fairness, again, I know, I would withdraw my motion if the seconder would do so too, because in fairness to him, he is on that, he is elected to that organization to represent us. And in fairness to him, he should have the opportunity to be part of the budget. So I will remove my motion, let anybody else want to suggest another time or day, they can deal out another motion if the seconder is okay with that. Very good. So I'll remove that. Sorry, Mr. Warden. Okay. Motion's withdrawn. Councillor Bean. I, I would like to entertain a motion, Mr. Warden, that we change it to Thursday. I don't understand why a Thursday isn't, I mean... I'll make that motion that we'll do it Thursday at 9 a.m. if that's if that's all right with everyone. <laughs> it's been seconded. Sorry, is that Thursday, March 2nd? Yes. Councillor Brock. Uh, thanks. Uh, I think we need to be fair to John. We better check to make sure the Thursday is going to work with John, too. And other, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? It's been asked to move to Thursday morning at 9 a.m. That'll give us a full day if we need it. All in favor of that? That's carried. Thank you very much. And that was the uh, motion to adjourn. Councilor Veen and Councilor Broad, all in favor? That's carried. Oh, Canada. <laughs>